Well, first and foremost, I'd like to welcome everybody and thank you for joining us for this webinar on the new version of CompTIA's Network Plus version N10-007. Now, the exam for this has been available ever since March of 2018. And generally speaking, they usually keep these certifications out for around three years before they rev it. And one of the secrets of really mastering or learning something is, I think, to have some interest in it. For example, consider a user like Bob, who is sitting at this computer, and Bob opens up a browser and types in www in his favorite website, .com, and presses enter, and then magically, the website that's out here on the internet, its content is then displayed on Bob's screen. And if you, like me, think that's amazing or interesting, I'm with you. There's a lot of cool pieces and parts that go on to make that happen. And in the CompTIA blueprint from Network Plus, they have five major domains, and here's the emphasis or weight, if you will, regarding those domains. Those are gonna explain the pieces and parts that allow a user like Bob sitting at his computer to go to a website and get a response and have it all work. So regarding the network concepts domain or area as part of Network Plus, let's talk about some of those that Bob would be leveraging as Bob goes out to the internet. Behind the scenes, Bob is using a protocol stack, specifically the internet protocol. And in addition, his browser is using an application layer service called HTTP, which relies on a connection-oriented protocol called TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, which rides on top of IP, which is routed at layer three through the networks to get to its final destination. And the reply traffic also comes back via layer three routing. And because Bob's actually going to an IP address, even though Bob typed in a name like www.hisfavoritesite.com, Behind the scenes, there was a lookup that looked up that name and was able to determine from that name what the IP address of that site was. And that's done through a service called DNS. And DNS, the domain name system, is another one of those networking concepts as part of this first domain. And then as Bob's traffic was being forwarded out in the direction of the internet, it went into this device here called a layer two switch. And the layer two switch did forwarding based on layer two MAC addresses, sometimes called physical addresses till those frames were forwarded over to the default router, the default gateway that Bob's using, which continued to forward it out in the direction of the server that Bob was trying to reach. And here on Bob's local network, we have the concept of layer two switching and VLANs and trunking, and all those fall in that category of networking concepts. And one of the problems, however, when Bob is trying to go out to the internet is Bob's company is very likely using some private IP addresses. And private IP addresses are not routable over the internet. So also as part of our networking concepts, we'd want to understand the concept of network address translation, which would likely happen here at the firewall or here at the router, which swaps out Bob's private IP address with a routable address on the internet so that packet can be forwarded over the internet. And then when the reply comes back from the server, the reply will be untranslated, if you will, and then forwarded back to Bob. Also in this network over here, we could have some computers that are wireless. And that could be a laptop or a mobile device or a tablet. And because it's not physically wired into a switch, it's gonna use an access point as a method to send signals back and forth wireless between itself and the rest of the network. Or if Bob goes home and Bob wants to go ahead and connect to the corporate network from home over the internet, he can build a virtual private network for security. And that way, anybody who's looking at Bob's packets going back and forth over the public internet, even if they get a copy of them, because they're encrypted and protected with a virtual private network, they won't be of any use to the attacker because the packets are all encrypted and the attacker won't be able to make sense of what's inside. So with VPNs, we're then touching on the domain of network security. With network security, we could also implement security on our networks by using administrative controls or physical controls. A physical control would be such as a lock on a door for the data center so that not just anybody could walk in. Or an administrative control would be something like it takes two to tango when making a change. An example would be we have one individual that can identify and suggest a change and another individual or team that's going to go ahead and approve that change so it can be allowed to happen. And that prevents a mistake or security issues from being injected into the network accidentally. And to make our networks function, we're gonna have lots of objects, including firewalls and routers and switches and computers, but we're also gonna have a lot of cables and connectors. As part of our local area network right here, or if we're connecting over geographic distances with wide area network connectivity, and all the types of cables and connectivity and devices would be considered part of our infrastructure, right here as domain number two in the Network Plus certification. The operations is gonna include details such as policies, 
Like, are you going to allow customers to bring their own devices to work and connect to the network? Yes or no? If that's a yes, that'd be considered a BYOD, a bring your own device policy. And network operations could also include the concept of documentation for our networks with high level network designs like this, as well as detail designs that might identify, for example, on an individual switch, exactly which ports are connected to which offices or which ports on the switches are being used to interconnect the switches, which are often referred to as trunk configured ports in a layer two environment. And one of the benefits of taking some time to really enjoy and understand the domains one, two, three, and four is that it's going to help us if there is ever a problem on the network. If we understand, for example, how Bob's computer is getting an IP address, we can then say to ourselves, okay, here's how it normally works. Here's what's currently happening. And we can go through a logical step-by-step -step approach to identifying why it's not working now, especially if it worked yesterday or the day before and it's not working now. Our troubleshooting technique would include looking back at what changed between then and now, as well as using tools and techniques to identify where the failure is occurring or why it's occurring. And then once we identify an idea or two regarding why it's failing, we then want to go ahead and implement changes and tests to verify that we can correct and resolve the problem. So that's a big picture view of CompTIA's Network Plus N10-007. Now, I had the opportunity in March to go and sit the exam and I was pleased. It's a very fair exam. Because it is vendor neutral, they're not going to be too heavy on understanding the specifics of one vendor's way of implementing a VLAN versus another, or one vendor's way of implementing routing versus another, which is good because it helps keep it vendor neutral. Another good thing is that any experience that you do have in working with or practicing with network gear or devices connected to a network is that that knowledge and experience will help you as well both in learning it and enjoying that process, as well as demonstrating your ability and understanding of it in a testing environment. And because this is a webinar from CBT Nuggets, let me talk with you a little bit about the course that we created for you at CBT Nuggets for Network Plus. We decided to take a slightly different approach and involve multiple instructors as we created this course for you. And we had a blast doing it. We also devoted a lot of attention to detail regarding each and every one of the elements on the blueprint including the bullets and the sub bullets. And we did that with the intent that as you go through these nuggets and you enjoy the course, not only are you learning the technology and having it reinforced, you're also being prepared for the certification if that's your end goal as well. And my coaching to you would be, as you go through the content, there are some hands-on labs that are provided as part of CBT Nuggets. So I would encourage you, whenever an instructor provides a hands-on lab, go ahead and take a few minutes and do it to reinforce what you are learning as you're going through the course. And I would also encourage you, as you approach each of these fairly short nuggets, I would encourage you to focus on learning it rather than just memorizing something. Because the instructor is focused on having you learn and understand how the technology works with that attitude of, yeah, I really do want to learn how this works. That'll improve the learning process and help you apply it that much faster. So once again, I wanted to thank everybody for spending a few minutes in joining us for this webinar. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a moment, grab a little sip of water, and let's open it up for any questions. We have a few minutes. Let's open it up for any questions that you might have regarding Network Plus or anything related to it that you might want to ask about. And the time is now yours.